welcome into a brand new episode of WSI TV. Enjoy the show. back to another brand new episode of Bishop's Move on WSI TV. I'm Jordan Bishop and I'm joined by Taylor Clinkbeal. How are you doing, Taylor? I'm good. How are you, Jordan? Good, thanks. So we've got a great episode for you today, but before we get to that, let's just mention that you need to go over to WSITV.com, sign up for our free daily newsletters, um, and of course you'll also get instant access to the WSI vault. So Taylor, why don't you kick things off here for mm -hmm. us uh, with today's topic? Yes, so today's topic is something that's very interesting to both Jordan and I, and it's something I wasn't really expecting to come across when I did find it. But um, today we're going to talk about that there's a certain corruption between the stock market and headlines that can be bought, mm -hmm. um, which that's probably not something you want to hear. I was none too happy when I found out about this because it is something that's very important and does actually influence the stock market in ways that you probably wouldn't think. Um, so there is kind of this unsettling tie between the news and what's happening in your investment accounts. So we're going to try and talk about that a bit today. Right. And of course, like you said, it sounds a little negative, but there is a positive outcome. Of course. Um, but first things first, let's ask the simple question, who's in charge of your money? Um, of course, what we're all about is managing your own money. Exactly. Right? Yes. Um, but what's the case here? Uh, yeah, so the whole point of what we're trying to do here is to put you in charge. Um, Wall Street and everyone in the institutions around you have been trying to take that control away from you ever since this whole institution started. Um, so we're trying to bring that control back home a little bit more so that way you have more charge about what's happening with mm -hmm. your money and your life. Um, but the mainstream media are going to have headlines all over the place that's going to change the market and that's going to change your investments. So these people that are playing the chessboard behind the scenes that you can't see, um, they're really impacting your life in ways that you probably didn't know about before. Right. Um, and it could be things that you're losing on their account. Right. And of course, you may notice certain similarities between our channel and what we do and, and what the news are doing. I can assure mm -hmm. you we couldn't be any more different. Yes. Um, if you notice, we don't have advertisements. Mm -hmm. We're not um, run by uh, big companies paying us mm -hmm. to keep us afloat here where um, you know news outlets like CNN and Fox on both sides of the spectrum mm -hmm. are being they would sink if the advertisers didn't pay for that ad exactly. space. Um, so they're of course doing everything they can to get as many views as they can um, and as many clicks on articles and, and what have you. So, exactly. Um, I think our success speaks for itself here. I would agree yeah. yeah. I mean we're always giving out stock picks and we're always telling you exactly what's happening as opposed to what we think may exactly. be happening, maybe not happening. Yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, so again, Taylor, as you alluded to, there's something going on in the background. Um, so, you know, it's basic knowledge. When you invest, um, the market should be what really dictates your profits. Exactly. But that's yes. not always the case. Is it? No, yeah. So we talk about quite a lot that there are things, again, that happen behind the scenes that you may not know about. There's insider trading, whether it's legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. um, there are things like earnings reports that maybe you don't pay attention to and different things behind the scenes that probably only institutional people or financial experts would pay attention to because that's their day-to-day -day concerns. Um, right. And you and I come across those things more often than not, but that's because we're looking for them. Mm. Um, the average person who has their money in an investing account probably doesn't know the things that are happening that can also impact the market in addition to company earnings and right. trade policy and things that are happening in the world. Um, it's not necessarily the main things you think it is. Um, the big companies behind the scenes with enough cash, if they want certain things to happen with the market, whether you want it to go up, you want it to go down, mm -hmm. There's a way with this index that we're going to talk about you in just a second that they can buy headline space and change the market in the right. way that impacts them or that um, affects them in a good way or a bad way, you know. But right. um, so you wouldn't think that that would be something that's legal, but yeah. uh, unfortunately I mean, it is. It's really a story of the sharks and the minnows, them being the sharks, yes. us being the minnows. And as we know, in the stock market, if a big chunk of a stock is bought, it's going to go up. If exactly. a big chunk of it is sold, it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. um, so let's jump into this index that we're talking about here. Taylor, why don't you introduce it for us? Yes. So we are going to talk about the Global Economic Policy Uncertainty Index. And now that sounds really official, really um, important, which it is. But it is the GDP weighted average for 20 countries, which means it's based on the things that they bring in and mm -hmm. their revenue and um, their success on the global scale. 
Um, so it reflects the frequency of, an, of one own country's news articles coming from that country mm -hmm. containing the terms economy, policy, and uncertainty. So those three words in any way, shape, or form, those things are tracked on this index no matter what way that they're used in what context. Right. So so what you're saying is it, it's, uh, and we'll, let's take a look at the chart in a bit, but mm -hmm. what you're saying is if there's uncertainty, this thing's going to spike. Yes, uh, exactly. As long as it's paired with economic or uh, policy. Exactly, yes. Uh, to be more specific, it's not actually based on the policy itself. So mm. there may be a policy that maybe you don't know a lot about or something that maybe it's not all nailed down yet behind the scenes with the legislature that's putting it out, but it's based on what the news outlets are saying about policy. Right. So it's even more flimsy and even more one step further from the actual truth. Mm. Um, it's not necessarily gauging the actual uncertainty in the world. It's just gauging what those news outlets are saying about uncertainty. Wow. So they really do have full control then over, exactly. over this aspect of the market. And as yes. we're going to see, there's a big cor correlation between this, the, what they're saying, of course, what is in the market, and yes, the market, which yeah. is very scary to hear as someone that's maybe one of the minnows in the yeah. market when you don't have millions of dollars behind your investment account. Um, yeah, it's a little scary to hear things like right. that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, either way, again, it's all positive because there's moves you can make yes. as long as you're abreast of the situation. There's mm -hmm. moves you can make, and uh, you can profit off it off this as what would you know it's what we're doing every week mm -hmm. here um so you made a good point here so uh, think about how uncommon pulitzer pri uh, winning pri writers are yeah and now you have the power is in the hands of these journalists who are looking to sell ad space exactly so yeah. it's kind of scary because they're the ones who are translating for mm -hmm. the, the minnows you know yes. the, the regular people mm -hmm. um and who knows what sort of spin they're putting on exactly so. yeah i mean you say it all the time someone needs to click on the headline you know so if no one's going to click on it it's not going to succeed. So they're going to say whatever they need to do to get you in the door on their page. Right, exactly. And the rich investors, they just need to buy newspaper space and they can influence. I mean, think about think about uh, like Warren Buffett, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Warren Buffett. I think he does a great job. But all he needs to do is say, I bought Delta or whatever it is. I bought IBM. And people are going to flood into IBM exactly. with nothing behind it. The, the earnings might not correlate. It mm -hmm. might just be random you know um, I mean I think everything he does is above board but I'm just saying with that much power yeah if it was person, anyone else you know you don't right you don't know yeah. exactly yeah so so it's kind of crazy so this is a chart here mm -hmm. of the GEPU index Taylor why don't you talk a little bit about these spikes that we're seeing yes so as you can see this is the chart from 1997 to 2015 and we actually come down to 2019 down here in the bottom right corner but um, right here behind Jordan we've got this spike in 1999 it's the Asian and Russian financial crisis which is a pretty significant jump that we've got mm. there, followed by the September 11 attacks right here, the invasion of Iraq. Here we've got the 2008 financial crisis, which again, only reaches about halfway up on this chart. Um, on, over on the right side, we've got the Brexit referendum in 2016, the 2016 presidential election as we're climbing higher and higher. And then we've got Brexit and the US government shut down all the way up to the end of right. 2019. Right. And we were talking earlier, it's funny that this chart even exists, the glo global economic policy uncertainty index because I don't believe there's a certainty index. Right? I don't believe so either. <laughs> because there's just a negative spin put on everything because exactly. that's what sells news. Yes. Uh, that's what sells stories. Yes. Um, and what's interesting too is what this is really telling me here is they're just talking about more uncertainty. Exactly. Right? So yes. that, that's the whole point of this. We weren't really the news. Like how high could this go? This could, we could be in this bull market for another five years and this could just keep climbing higher. It could it's be infinite. Crazy. Yes, exactly. So here you have um, sort of a chart plotting the uh, the big events of our mm -hmm. past and yes. how, how high the uh, index spiked, right? Yes, yes. So we've got right here in the middle, the largest number that you saw on that chart before, the highest we've ever gotten is in today's rhetoric, the mm -hmm. ones that surrounding the, the new election in 2020, right. the trade war that we saw earlier this year and everything that's been going on in the, the monetary policy in 2019, all of that has surpassed Iraq, Trump election, September 11, 2001, the Brexit vote and the 2008 recession and the crash. Yeah. Um, all of those things didn't even come close. Um, and this is just on a scale of what news outlets are saying when it comes to uncertainty. And it's it's a fear tactic. They're trying to get everyone up in a, in a, right. a panic and it worked. Right. And, and I mean, what this could be telling us too is it's harder to for them to cause this panic. So they're having to push it more and more and more. Yes. You know? So yeah. during, I don't know, the 2008 crash, all they had to say was, you know, 10 things or something. Yes. But now they have to say 20 mm -hmm. because, you know, we're, we're hitting double the, those figures mm -hmm. on that chart. So, yes. um, you know, positive and negative there. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a very interesting look at how, how today's, the size of today's um, or the volume of today's exactly. uncertainty yes. in the news. Yes. That's very, uh, very crazy there. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about you? You're comparing that index here 
uh, to the VIX. So really, if you look closely, we're seeing spikes at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So this is the one that is uh, specifically for the United States from 1990 to 2019. Um, and the VIX is the stock market's volatility index, if you don't remember. Um, essentially, you probably could explain this better than I do, but it just measures volatility in the stock market. So if there's lots of heavy mm -hmm. movement in one day or one week, right. for example, yeah, I mean, we also call this the fear and greed index. Exactly. So, it, so fear would mean that it's spiking high. Um, it's actually it's the bottom line. It's the very mm -hmm. lower line. This lower it's, one down it's here. pretty sideways, but we'll get spikes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it if it reaches forty plus, it's pretty high. Mm -hmm. It usually hovers around um, eight to ten to twelve. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's usually in, in normal time periods. Um, but yeah, basically, if there's high fear, this thing spikes. So it's funny looking at this chart. Because, I mean, you almost want to know which came first, the chicken or the egg. Exactly. Which is driving which, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. I have a feeling that it's the, the economic policy, policy uncertainty index. I would have to agree with you there, yeah. I mean, looking at these spikes, obviously the, the uncertainty index spikes a lot higher and a lot faster than the VIX does. But again, you are seeing this very similar movements in that chart underneath, which mm -hmm. shows you that this is not... The stock market's not chugging along and ignoring this. This is right. actually something that's it's it's influencing it's what's reacting, happening. It's reacting, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's usually very quick spikes as well. So mm -hmm. you know, it's not these things that the the media outlets are saying. They're not long lasting. Yes. Right. I yeah. mean, we're still we're still talking about. Um, I mean, we're always going to be talking about Trump until he's out of the picture, whether mm -hmm. that's next uh, this year or in four mm -hmm. years. Um, we're always going to be talking about Iraq as long as that's going on. But it's always quick spikes, and then the market sort of realizes, well, mm -hmm. the, the economics look good. Yeah. Know? So yeah. Let, let's keep this bull market going, really. Mm -hmm. um, so how does this affect the viewers here? Uh, that's a very good question. So I'm sure you guys have heard throughout the entirety of last year, which, again, I forgot we're in 2020 now. But yeah. um, we, hear, you, we would say that, well, stocks are down because of this trade tension that's happening mm -hmm. or because this... Uh, meeting with the Federal Reserve is happening and people are uncertain. They don't know what's going to happen. Right. Um, so obviously this is something that can drag the market down. If people are afraid, again, you said the fear and greed index, mm. they're going to either go up very rapidly, go down very rapidly, and usually it's the latter. Um, so newspapers will print headlines, everyone reacts, the market responds to people mm. reacting, and then it just keeps going. Right. Right. And you could say the sharks and the no will sort of normalize it because they, they know what's going on behind the scenes. Exactly, you know? so yes. Whether this is for, you know, new, like ad uh, headline clicks like mm -hmm. you spoke about for ad revenue, or there's probably some people actually profiting off these spikes as yes, well. Yes, yeah. Um, short in certain stocks and mm -hmm. whatever they're doing. So either way, it's very shady. Um, it's very, I mean, it's just one big scam really, but yes. you don't have <laughs> to really fall victim to that mm -hmm. um, because there are profits that come out of this. Yes, yeah. So let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about ensuring our investments, yes. right? Because as long as we know about this, mm -hmm. we can we can react and we can also be proactive. We exactly. Can sort of see it coming. Yes. Um, so we have things like gold and, and other stuff in our mm -hmm. portfolio. Um, so let's talk about exactly where where the viewers should invest in. Yes. So again, we say it a lot here, but it doesn't matter what the market is doing. You can make money off of it. Um, there are different ways that you can maneuver yourself and your investments depending on what the market is doing, but. In terms of the uncertainty index, you don't necessarily need a pick that would be immune to what it does. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need one that's going to keep chugging no matter what the uncertainty index is doing because, again, we can't really pinpoint what those are. Right. Um, anything could be affected by the general market moving. It doesn't really have a set formula for figuring out which one is which. But So that being said, you don't need an immune pick. You just need a smart one in terms of what the market is doing at that time. Right, and smart meaning that it's the right pick and it's the right time as exactly. well, which is very important because stocks are always going to go up and down. Yes. So as long as you're in... On the on the upturn, mm -hmm. then it doesn't really matter what happens after. Before. Exactly. So, yes. um, I like this this chart you put together yes. here. So, <laughs> walk us through this. Yes. So, like I said before, the smart picks that you make depend on what the market is doing. Um, a pick that may be good for you this week may not be good for you later this year. Um, mm -hmm. It just depends on when your good entry point comes up and if you get it on time. Um, so if we've got trade tensions going on, for example, a smart pick would be getting into domestic stocks. Um, we talked about this a lot, especially on Lee and I's episodes. But um, if you were worried about what was happening with the Chinese trade tensions or even with the EU, you could invest in American homemade companies and you wouldn't really have to worry about those as much impacting mm -hmm. your investments. Um, if we had recession concerns, we saw the 2020 recession headline earlier this or earlier last year, um, and everyone was freaking out about that. They all rushed to safety trades. You right. rushed to your gold and your bonds and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, if we have an expected bull rally, which fortunately for you, we are in one right now, um, you look for strong charts, you look for good picks that you can get in on a good point and make money in whatever time frame you have, and you move on with your profits and wash your hands of it. Right, so. that's exactly right. And we say it's easy enough, but let's show you... Um, 
let's let's show you the example of strong charts, yes. right? So we are in a bull market, mm -hmm. as we've said. Um, wh what is this chart you've got here? It's the AAI. Yeah. Yes. So this yeah. is the index. You actually showed this to me, mm -hmm. where you can look and actually see how many investors either believe or are acting accordingly if we are in a bull market. Right. Um, which, as you can see, it's kind of small right down here. We do have this huge spike right from this median line up here that shows that people are kind of catching on to what we've been saying for a couple of months now, that mm -hmm. we are in an up, uh, upturn and we are profiting in this bull rally right, right now. So basically the percentage of bulls in the market. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So we said it's easy enough and, you know, that's easy for us to say, but yes. let's take it one step further <laughs> and give you some of these strong charts yes. that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So here. I think we do have two picks for you today, just to give you an example of no matter what you're doing, we can pick strong charts, especially since we're in such a good market uh, right now. Mm. So the first one I have for you is the Booz Allen Hamilton Holding Corp. The ticker for that is BAH. And I'm pretty sure you can see this is an incredibly strong chart behind me. It's got this great upwards movement. And we're seeing it drop down a little bit to that 40 week, but that is a good thing right now because mm. that is where a good entry point would be for you. Right. And a lot of people look at charts like this and they think, oh, it's so high. Mm -hmm. Of course it's high. But that doesn't mean it can't go higher. You exactly. Know, just because it's at the top of the chart in the picture mm -hmm. doesn't mean the chart doesn't go higher. Once I was going to say, the you could up. cut it off back here and it would look like that's the highest it could exactly. go either. So, I mean, the chart just keeps going up. You yeah. just have to get in at the right time. Right. You're never going to be able to buy low, sell high. You want to you want to get in the trend. You want to mm -hmm. buy high, sell higher. Exactly. You know? Yes. So this next one, uh, Kirkland Gold uh, Trust here. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the chart. Yes. Yeah. So again, it looks pretty similar to the one we put up before, um, which should be a good indicator of what you're looking for. Right. Um, again, you see that we've got this great respect for that red line, which we kind of call like I call it the temperature of the stock. If it's going up, that means that it's a good thing, um, unlike having a fever. But mm. um, we're looking at it and it's a great entry point right now. And it's just been going chugging up no matter what. Yeah, kind of and just I, hit it. I specifically like this company because mm -hmm. you may think it's a safety trade because of the word gold in it, but they actually specialize in the real estate of the gold miners. Yes. So they actually buy the real estate. Um, they do mine themselves as mm -hmm. well, um, but they're sort of an all-in-one package. So exactly. usually you'll see gold stocks, you know, they're elastic. They'll go mm -hmm. up and they'll come down yeah. as the price of gold fluctuates. Um, this is actually a, a profit building company exactly. behind this one. Yes. So you're getting the safety of the gold, really. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. expect this to go down as much yeah. during recession. Um, but you're also getting the, the high profit, the high reward exactly. um, from it being an innovative company. So. Yes. Yeah. And real estate, the real estate sector is looking great right now, too. Yeah. So. so yeah, two great picks there. Um, so of course, always trust the chart and not a headline. Exactly. I think that's the, uh, <laughs> the theme here. Yes. But the bottom line is there'll always be something to trade, yes. right? So we're one step ahead with this information. Mm -hmm. um, just just follow the numbers. Yes, you know, look that's at the chart, exactly it. Follow the numbers. Um, follow us each week. We've got mm -hmm. three shows each week. To, yes. We're here to help you. Um, so Taylor, this was such a great uh, topic you brought to my attention today. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the latest episode of WSI TV. Be sure to visit WSITV.com where you can subscribe for free with no contract and gain instant access to the secrets of self-made millionaires via the WSI TV vault. So go ahead and claim this gift for free now at WSITV.com.